Well, the old brick wall is gone. We've cleaned up a little bit and now we are getting closer and closer to the actual installation. Next steps for me is going to be to try and remove this plaster or parging from the chimney and expose the bricks. And I'm just going to take my uh, little bar and hammer and chisel it out, break it out. Hopefully it'll come off. I, I've done a few pieces where it's come off in chunks. So that is something that should be pretty easy to do. And then we should be ready to move on to the hearth project, which is not going to be as intense as I had once thought it would be. Now, originally I was told that a hearth had to be four inches thick, but come to find out it depends on the stove that you buy. The stove that we bought only requires ember protection. In fact, the salesperson told me that some people just use a piece of tempered glass under the stove. Uh, I'm not going to be doing that. We are going to put a, a, a hearth, either brick or tile, but it's not going to be four inches thick. We've also changed our mind once again. Now the idea is to put the stove right in the middle, right in front of the chimney, so the stove will be centrally located in the room, and I think we're going to stick with that plan. So. I'll be cutting out the floor. Uh, we've got two layers of three quarter inch flooring here. You've got the original three quarter inch flooring and then they added uh, more flooring years and years ago. So I'm gonna cut out the first layer, or maybe it will be the second layer, the top layer, uh, to give myself a three quarter inch recess. Then I'll put some cement board down and some tiles or thin brick. That's gonna be my plan for the hearth. At this point, I have chipped the plaster or cement coating off of two sides of the chimney. We're going to leave this natural brick. I've got one more side to do here, and it has not come off as difficult as I thought it would. Uh, some of it's pretty stubborn, but for the most part, it does chip away and leave the exposed brick pretty easily. And then on this side, the fourth side of the chimney, we don't have to worry about that because that's going to be behind the wall. Of course, we're going to replace this Gatorade bottle with the cement, but for now, that's keeping the draft from coming out of the chimney there. So overall, we're in pretty good shape. Well, this side here was the most difficult to work on for a number of reasons. One is, for some reason, it seems like it really stuck to the to the brick a lot better than the other sides. The front almost fell off. You know, that was peeling away maybe because it had a lot of heat from the stove years ago, but that was come that came off very easily. But this side had uh, really it really stuck on there really well. Um, the other thing that was difficult is I'm right-handed. And I like to work uh, when I'm, I use my left hand with the chisel, my right hand with the hammer, and I like to work from right to left because I'm, I'm banging it that way where I couldn't do that here because it's in a corner and it was very awkward to try and work in from the left side to the right side. So that made it more difficult too. But anyway, I, I, I got this far with it and Anna and I talked this morning. She said, why don't you leave some on there? For the look, you know, you see that on buildings and places. So I think I've left enough where it may qualify as adding character. I don't think we're going to remove any more of that. We'll see uh, how it looks when we get the rest of the work up here. All right, let me show you the next phase of this project. I've got these reclaimed brick from uh, an old building in Chicago. They, they saved the brick and they sliced it down to just a half inch thick, so it's brick veneer. And I'm going to remove the top layer of wood here because I've got two three-quarter inch layers of wood. The original floor, which we'll call the subfloor, and then this floor that was added several years later. So I'm going to take up an area of just that top layer of floor. I'm going to put cement board down, lay the brick veneer in there, and it should be level with the floor at that point. It will look like the brick is inlaid in the floor. Actually, it will be, uh, but you won't realize it's only a half inch thick plus the plus the cement sort board. So what I have to do is carefully cut 
along this edge and take up this section of flooring. I've got everything laid out and set up here. Uh, I drew a nice straight line on the floor here. I removed the first few boards because I wouldn't be able to get the saw back in that corner using one of these uh, reciprocating saws. Boy, I don't know what we did before these things came out. When they first came on the market, or the first time I saw them anyway, I don't know how long they've been out, I thought it was kind of a joke tool when I thought it was dumb. I use this thing so much and it's got a very specific purpose, but nothing seems to match it when it comes to the usefulness of one of those tools in tight spaces. So I was able to cut the first few boards out. I've got the saw set up to go along here. I've got the shop vac ready to go. Uh, I've got the circuit breaker panel open, ready to be tripped and reset because I'm gonna be drawing a lot from this little outlet here with the shop vac and the saw, so hopefully it'll handle it. Let's give it a try. Start with the shop vac. Okay, well that was quick. That didn't take long. Take two. Okay, both sides are cut. Got a nice cut along here. Another one on the other side. I went a little bit bigger than my original measurement just based on the width of the bricks. So I've got that going all the way down there. This one I didn't cut at all because I'm just met up with a seam and I should be able to just pry this board off and leave that one in place. I may have to clean this edge up once I get the board out, but that should be okay. So now I'm going to just start prying these boards out and hopefully they'll all come up easily. You might be saying, now why don't you save those old boards? Well, first of all, they're not really that old. I mean, they're not historic. Uh, they're, they're old, they might be 60 years old or so, but they're not historic. Uh, and uh, they're also just pine boards, they're cracking apart, and I just don't think they're worth saving. Now that I've got this area all cleaned out, it's pretty interesting to think about the history of this old house here. You can see there, there was a crock going into the chimney very low. From what I understand, the old uh, stoves went straight back into the chimney instead of venting up with a pipe. So there must have been maybe a little pot belly stove right here in front of the chimney. And then you look here at all this black here, I'm guessing they had no hearth. And the stove probably sat right on the wood. Now right here in the middle, there is a divot. Maybe that was from embers dropping on it. Maybe it's where they drop the wood all the time, but it's actually cupped and rounded there. So just pretty interesting to think about. Whenever I've done tile work in the past, 
I've used hardy backer, backer board rather than this door rock cement board. And that's because I always felt like this seemed more crumbly and the hardy backer seemed a little more durable. Uh, so this time though, I've chosen to use, to try the door rock because I like the rough texture that this has. And I think since we're using brick instead of tile, I just feel like it might stick better with the, uh, with the thin set. I'm gonna use a modified thin set with this. So I'm going to lay down uh, a, uh, a layer of thin set, set the door rock on top of that, screw it down. Uh, of course, after I cut the edges here, I've never cut this before. Apparently you just score it with a razor knife, cut through the mesh and snap it. So just two pieces will fill the area and that'll give me the backer that I need to start laying brick. Okay, now that I dry fit the two pieces of cement board, I'm gonna pull those up, mix up some thin set, and put down a thin bed of thin set to lay these into, and then screw them down. This is a non-modified thin set, and I'll be using a modified thin set on the top layer, which basically just has, I think it just has latex in it. Now it tells you to drive the screws every eight inches. Well, the cement board is in place. The thin set has been curing for about 16 hours. So now we are ready to start laying the brick veneer in place. Uh, I'm all set up now. I've got my modified thin set that I'm gonna set it in. The modified thin set, from what I understand, has some latex additive in it, and it makes it bond even better to the tile or the brick. So I think that'll work out pretty well. I've got a little cutoff saw here, a little wet wheel tile saw. I could probably just cut the bricks either with a chisel or if I had a diamond wheel on my little grinder, I could just score it and cut it. But I don't have either of those you know, ready right now. So I've got this little saw, that should work fine. It might be overkill, but that way we'll be able to cut whatever pieces we need. This should go really quickly. And once we do that, we will, hi Margaret. We will um, be ready to set the brick in place and then grout it hopefully tomorrow. All right, so this is Ultra Flex tile mortar and it's gray and it's the modified type. That looks like a nice consistency. 
Well, here we go. If you took place in the Facebook poll that I put up there, I've decided to go with design number two, which is two bricks vertical, two bricks horizontal, vertical horizontal. I don't know what that's called, but it matches the sidewalk pattern that we have here. So that's what we're gonna do here. And we're gonna go with that right now. down a thin layer first and I've got the quarter inch trowel here quarter inch notches going to set them loosely in place so that I can adjust them once they're in and I'll press them down. more than that quite a bit more now here's where things will get a little bit tricky because I'm gonna to have to start cutting some bricks to go in place here That is nice. And here is the final piece going in. The trickiest cut I had to make, which really wasn't that tricky. And just adjust the gap here. That is nice. Let's step back and look at the whole thing without tripping over something. Oh, that's nice. That is exciting. We'll let that set and then we'll grout. Boy, I am really happy with those results. It's funny that I mixed up what I thought was enough thin set to do a couple rows. Turns out I had enough to do the whole project, so I didn't estimate correctly on that one, but it worked out great because I didn't have to go back and mix anymore. Toward the end, I started to dip the bricks in water and the uh, clay just sucked up the water. So I probably should have been doing that all along. So that, that way the thin set could take a little more time to, to soak in. Uh, but they're not gonna be really stepped on or anything. The stove's gonna sit there and um, they won't be disturbed much, but I think they're gonna be in good shape anyway. They're, they're really solid and it looks great. I'm excited to get the 
uh, grout in place, which is basically like, I don't know how I'm gonna do that because it's not like tile where you put it in and you rub it off with a sponge. These are gonna be kind of pointed like bricks, but I bought one of those like uh, bags, like pastry bags, you put the mortar in and you squeeze it out. So I'm thinking I'll be able to fill the cracks with that and then kind of point it with a, with a tool or a spoon or something. So that's gonna be the next step, I'm quite excited. You can see how the brick just sucks up the water. So we'll just pre-wet everything. And that should give me a little more working time for the grout. So here's the grout bag that I bought and it has a probably a eight inch opening at the top. There's already a hole at the bottom, maybe three eighths of an inch or so. You could cut this bigger, but I'm gonna leave it just like it is. So I have hopefully some more control. I mixed up the grout just like I did the thin set, uh, only I went for kind of a, a pudding consistency on this, thinking the looser it'll flow into places. I hope that's a good choice. And uh, I'm gonna try and fill this bag with a little bit and see if that works. I'm gonna try and, I think just scoop some in. That's pretty loose, I don't know. Maybe I'll try and pour some in. Hmm. Must be a trick to this that I'm not aware of. <laughs> oh boy. This could get messy. Here we go. There we go. Just a little to start with, because I don't know how this is going to go. Okay, maybe a little thicker consistency would have been good. I don't know. Let's see. Well, it's sort of like caulking. Definitely gives me control, but I do think a little thicker might have been better. I knew this was going to be tedious, uh, but it's it's very tedious. But I guess that's good because I need to take time to really control how I'm doing this. But uh, so far, it doesn't look too pretty, but I'm sure we'll get there. I feel like this is a combination between caulking and milking a cow. Now what I thought here is to just use this stainless steel spoon and maybe that could create, yeah that's not, it's not great. <laughs> we may end up using the rubber float. I think this is just a little too loose. Hope I didn't waste 12 pounds of grout. Oh, I could add some more to it, couldn't I? Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Let's just try the rubber float in the corner. might be the way to do it. Try a little of that. And then I'll wipe it with the sponge. See if that'll work for us. Definitely need to make my next batch a little thicker. 
This may take on a whole different look than originally anticipated. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. Horrible, I tell you. Well, here goes nothing. Might as well start in this corner. Let's see what that'll do. This does not look good. And what's happening is the surface is actually drying super fast because the brick is absorbing it, so I can't try to point it. What a what a fine mess, Ollie. Sheesh. Oh boy. Okay, absolute worst case. That looks kind of cool but it won't look like that in the end. I did start to remove some uh, of the grout with my sponge over here, and it is coming up, so I feel like if I can get most of that off, and then when this hardens up some more, I should be able to really scrub the top of those bricks. So I think it is gonna come off pretty well. Um, one thing I'm finding is that even though I did wet down the bricks, the surface of the bricks are so, uh, porous and absorbent that the top layer of grout is kind of thick and it dries on top of these bricks really quickly. You can see I can scrape into that. That's a good sixteenth of an inch thick right there. So I'm going to scrape that off when I'm before I start to sponge it down. I did a little test piece over there too. I'm going to scrape this off and see how dry that is. I'm going to vacuum it with the shop vac and then I'll hit it with the sponge. This is probably a very unconventional way of doing what I'm doing, but in the end, convention doesn't matter if you get the results you need. So that's all we're hoping for at this point. Look, at this point, I get that there are probably masons and tile workers who are looking at this and just cringing, thinking what in the world is he doing? And I felt the same way. There are dead masons rolling over in their graves right now. But the fact is I just did not know how to work with this brick veneer. Uh, I should have used, probably continued to use that bag, only used a very thick mix for the grout. That might have worked better, but it was just too loose, and uh, I didn't expect the brick surface to absorb the water so quickly, causing this grout to dry so quickly on the top. It was really a mess, but believe me, by the end, it's going to look okay. Okay, so now I'm just wiping each brick, wringing out the sponge. It's a lot of wiping because you want to keep your sponge clean. And it's funny because the thing about any kind of cement work is it's the hurry up and wait and then hurry up again because you have to hurry up to get the pour done to get it laid in place and they have to wait for it to start to set up and then you have to hurry up and finish it so it's a lot of kind of stressful for me doing this kind of work but i'm starting to feel better about the look and that's all that matters in the end is that it comes out looking good and working well this sponge is a little more abrasive. It's also broken down a lot more. But this might be good for the for the first pass to try and get the heavy stuff off. 
maybe. Yeah, it seems like just a few minutes ago, this was too wet to do anything with. And now it's hardening up quick. Well, there it is, the completed hearth. I'm really happy with that. I was afraid I wasn't gonna be able to see any of the brick surface, but it did wipe up pretty clean. A little more residue on top than I had initially planned, but I think that little bit of haze is still gonna come off as we wipe it. So it came out really nice. Uh, I'm gonna come back and just buy the matching caulk to come along here because I thought I'd be able to grow out there, but that's too tough to do. So they make a matching caulk, which is even better because that will allow the wood to expand and contract next to it. But other than that, we are ready to set the wood stove in place. We'll capture that on another video, but this one was strictly about the hearth and uh, it looks really good, really good. I'm really happy with that. And I'm excited that we'll be burning wood soon. Hey, it's me from the future. <laughs> I'm actually editing upstairs right now and I wanted to break in here for just a second because while I'm looking at the video, I'm thinking that doesn't look as good as it does in person. So I thought, let me give you a visual of what things look like today. Now that it's been about four days since I did the work, I placed the wood stove in place here so you can see what that looks like. And it just has not been connected to the chimney yet. We're getting ready to do that hopefully this week. But otherwise it's in place and it looks, I think it looks really good. Um, so I wanted to make sure you saw kind of the finished product. So there's a peek for you. And uh, now we'll go back to the video and wrap things up. Well, this has been a big project, maybe a little bigger than I anticipated, but now it's done. It looks really good. Along the back walls here, we're gonna put some shiplap boards across. Well, that's a door there. We're gonna leave that. But uh, there'll be shiplap boards here for a background and uh, that'll make that tie in very nicely with the look of the old chimney and now the hearth. The hearth looks, on, on video, I think it looks a little more yellowish than it is in person. Uh, the bricks definitely are not as red as the chimney, but the fact that we were able to find any brick veneer at all uh, worked out really well. So thanks for watching today. I appreciate you joining along on this project. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to join us. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.